Welcome back to Switch to Linux, and it is Monday, and it's time for another Top 5. And today we're just going to do a Top 5 that's more broad towards whole computers as in general, rather than something that is specifically Linux-focused. And the reason for this is a friend of mine, who is a high school student, had asked me to do something very similar to this. You know, what are the types of things that... that you need to know in the real world that the schools are not teaching you in this crazy super tech savvy age our kids just come out of school really not knowing a lot about some of the core functions of technology um also i'm doing these one through five instead of the five down through one just kind of reversing the order um so what we're going to do is without any further ado we're going to talk about the top five computer skills youth are not taught in schools Number one on my list is how to save files. Everybody is being pushed into this cloud. The companies want them pushed into the cloud. Google and Microsoft and Apple wants everything in the cloud. It's safe there, it's backed up there. You never have to push the save button. This actually occurred to me because I'm working on a book with, uh, with a teenager right now and um, and in that book, one day uh, he didn't get a chance to do part of the essay, and so I was like, well, we'll just do it over here. Here's the actual writing computer we're writing on. Go ahead and just write the essay here while I go do something else. So he brings me the essay, and I said, did you save the file? He's like, how do you do that? What? How do you save the file? Well, of course, because the online cloud services, this person has never used a office software that is installed on a computer. It's always been the web base. It's always been the Google Docs. It's always been, you know, the Office 365. There's no save button. Everything is automatic. It's all stored in the cloud. You never have to save it. So you need to learn how to save a file. Now, over the course of doing this, what my advice to a young person is, is these things have tracked you your entire life. I think that this is unethical personally um, because they now have data for millions of American students as to how you learn and develop. So what I tell people as soon as you finish high school, you save everything off that account that you can, that you need, and you simply either delete the account or stop using the account, change the password so you can never get back into it, stop using the stupid thing because they want you to keep using that for your convenience. They, it's just the same thing that Apple did to bring on brand loyalty, but it produces a generation of students who don't know how to save files and don't know how to interact with files and don't know how to do all that kind of stuff. So learn how to save a file. Use software installed on your computer or whatever your computer happens to be and learn how to save those files for you and then only move them into the cloud as is necessary for what you happen to be doing. Number two, closely related to number one, learn how to properly back up. With this entire cloud-based model, they just want you to sync everything to the cloud, sync everything to the cloud. And then of course what they realize is that with everything synced to the cloud, they only give you a certain amount of space and eventually you're just gonna have to start paying them for more space. Uh, this happens more and more, uh, and as we grow up, we realize how much more, you know, we will need our images in the cloud and everything in the cloud, and realize that you are putting your personal files on someone else's server, and you don't have any control over that, or who's in there, or who's doing what. And what happens is you forget that there are times you need to take appropriate file backups. So you should be saving everything that you're doing on your computer and then learning how to do a backup. Now, whether that happens to be getting yourself a hard drive to back up to or just a thumb drive to back up to, learn to make backups of your systems on a regular basis, once a week, once every other week, you know, once a month, whatever the, the backup rate happens to be. That way, when fi if files get corrupted, if files you know, if hard drives break, if computers bust in, if crypto, you know, uh, encryption hackers get in there and encrypt all your files, you have an offline backup of all of your files. So learn how to make proper backups. Save all your files to your computer and then learn how to make a backup. Number three, as you go into the school system, you're handed pieces of paper and you are told, fill out this, fill out that, don't leave anything blank. And this starts to translate itself into the online world where you're navigating a website, some pop-up form appears before your eyes and you just feel the urge to fill in everything. Don't do it. Avoid filling out too much information online. 
Every company would like to know every bit of information about every person who visits their website. If you fill out any information, you're giving them information. Always ask, is it important? What information do they need to know? Does a website need to know your birth date? The answer is no, a resounding no. With the sole exception of some government thing or some bank thing, no one else needs your birthday. Facebook doesn't need your birthday. Microsoft doesn't need your birthday. They want it and they use that to track you and to sell you. They want to collect all of this information. And the school systems are doing a very bad job about teaching you security, about thinking about what is on the form in front of you. Just because a form pops up does not mean you need to fill out information. Just because you need to fill out information on a form does not mean you have to give them everything. If the website won't let you move because you're not filling in your birthday and you're like, I don't really think that this, that this newsletter site needs my birthday, make something up because they have no reason for it. Or I would actually ask, why are you even giving them any information? But avoid filling out too much information online. Number four, do not use social media as a consumer. All right, so what do I mean by this? Now, I generally take a strong stand against a lot of social media, but I don't say social media is completely worthless. What we need to figure out how to do is how to use social media, not as a consumer. Use social media as a tool, which means if there's four or five businesses or websites or people you follow online or whatever else that you really wanna keep up to date with online with what people are doing, uh, if that's actually what you want to do, um, then get a social account so you can follow their social accounts. Follow them not as a consumer, not as a person taking in all this stuff, not as a person addicted to always having to check the updates, but as a person who's simply following a few things as a business thing and something I always recommend in the in lights of all of the things on your phone. If you got yourself a smartphone, you should turn off all notifications except for phone conversations, text messages, and maybe emails, depending on what you're doing. You don't need YouTube or WhatsApp. Well, maybe WhatsApp because it's primarily used as communication, but you don't need um, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter constantly pinging you notifications. You don't need notifications for an online video game. For crying out loud, you don't need all these notifications because you get into the habit of every time your phone beeps, you look at it. Every time your phone beeps, you look at it. And then what ends up happening is you get so distracted and you are letting your phone control you. That happens because you're allowing social media to, to take you as a consumer. You use it as a tool, not as a consumer. Before we get into my last tip, I will let you know you can help support Switch to Linux at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. There are Amazon affiliate links in the description below. If you ever shop on Amazon, consider using that link. Uh, it does not cost you anything more and Amazon will send a small percentage of that sale uh, to us. I also have a Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash Tom M uh, to learn about actually Patreon support for all three of my channels. And I also have some merchandise available at shop.switchlinux.com, which will forward you to Spreadshirt. Um, but there I have things like t-shirts. So this is one of the t-shirts that I have. And uh, I also have a uh, very nice mouse pad a lot of people enjoy. So you can buy these over there. And I also have things like water bottles and travel mugs, coffee cups, things like that. Where, where's that logo? There it is. <laughs> so I have all these things available there at Spreadshirt, uh, which you can get to it at shop.switchtolinux.com. And our last tip, learn to use your computer offline. Don't rely on cloud services. Don't rely on your computer always being on the internet. Think of your computer, suppose you're going on a remote trip somewhere for a few days and you need to bring your computer, maybe you're an author, you wanna write. Learn to use your computer offline. Learn how to use word processors offline, saving and backing up your files, all these types of things. There was a time our computers were not perpetually on the internet. Think about how you might use your computer in those manners. This is actually important because it teaches you to be more productive and less distracted by the things that are on the internet. So those are my five tips. Youth have not been taught in schools in this tech savvy age. So thanks for watching and leave me your tips down in the comments below. So thanks for watching this video on these top five computer skills. Check out some of my other videos on the channel and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.